Photography Chat with Merlin. Photography Chat with Merlin. All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of Photography Chat with Merlin. We're in season three, episode 24, and we've got Melissa, a.k.a. Luna Moth uh, Photos, right? Yeah. Uh, do you want to take a sec to uh, let uh, the people know a bit about you? Uh, sure. Um, I would say I'm still pretty amateur photographer. I've been doing it for a long time, but I definitely have a bit of imposter syndrome. So (laughs) I still would say amateur. Um, My big thing is street photography. I do a lot of boudoir, um, which I love. Um, And yeah, I've been in Toronto like eight years now. So I started in Ottawa. Um, And yeah, Toronto for a while now. That's pretty cool. Um, Mm -hmm. So were you, you were doing photography when you were in Ottawa before? Did you just get started when you moved to Toronto? No, I've actually been doing it since I was like a kid. So my dad's actually a professional photographer. Okay. So I was really lucky to have that kind of guidance. And I I grew up with like a dark room and a a studio in my house. So I was really lucky. Um, But I did film for the longest time. Like I actually just bought my first digital camera probably like seven years ago but up until then it was like all film all the time I didn't even like step into the digital world um until I would say I guess recently so yeah so it was different my dad did only film photography so I didn't even really know about digital until I like moved out of home and was like what is this (laughs) what is this world of different photography so that's really interesting. So was there like a specific moment you can remember when you decided you want to get into it or it's just like it was always around. So it was just something that like just naturally came up. Yeah, it was just always around. It was something that I thought kind of just everybody was into because like I said, it was like my dad gave me my first camera when I was like seven. So like I was like, oh, this is normal. We and and that. Polaroid that I have was literally my dad from the nineties. So it's, yeah, I was always just into it. I was always, you know, in the background of all the photo shoots he was doing, being like a little sidekick and carrying bags and film and stuff. So yeah, I've always been really interested. I took a couple courses in like high school and I did a couple courses outside of high school as well. And I've always just really loved it and been really interested in it. So. That's very cool. Mm-hmm. What, what, uh, do you remember what that first camera was that your dad gave you? Yeah, it was just like a little, like 110 film, like took no pictures. I think it took like 15 shots or something ridiculous. And I just remember my dad being so annoyed all the time because I was constantly just like bringing him used rolls of film and being like, I need more, I need more. And he's like, you need to like calm down and you need to like plan your shots better. Cause I was just like wildly out there, like firing off shots and getting my pictures back. And like two of them were good. And so he kind of really taught me to like hone in on not taking a million pictures and really looking for the shot, which I'm notorious for still doing now. Um, I feel like I should take more shots than I do, but I'm like overly confident sometimes where I'll take like two snaps of something and be like, moving on, I'm good. And then sometimes I go back and I'm like, damn, I should have taken like a few more shots, but I, it's film. I'm used to film. So I'm like, can't, I can't waste it. And it's like, I have a digital camera. I don't know why I still have that thought process. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of people that start with digital and go into film have the opposite problem. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, I, I guess it's good to have that sort of mindset. I find whenever I switch back and forth between them, um, I get lazy when I start shooting digital again. And mm-hmm. I'll just be like, whatever, I'll take like 50 shots of this one thing and one of them will be okay. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I've been shooting film more, it's like, 
I'll find myself, I'll pick up the camera and I'll look through uh, the viewfinder and then I'll be like, nah, you know what? I don't really want to take this picture now. Like I thought it was something, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, eh, I don't really like it. Yeah. It's definitely a different skill set for sure. And I think that learning film and doing a lot of film first definitely benefited in the way I shoot because I am definitely more conscious of what I'm shooting and not taking those million photos. Cause there's nothing worse than like doing a photo shoot and then having to go through like 800 pictures and be like, there's too many pictures and, and editing a million pictures is also the worst. So I really like to just, you know, keep it minimal, get those good shots, take my time. Because I do think too, like you said, with digital, it's, it's people just rush it a little bit and they just snap a bunch and hope that something turns out. But I like having that skill set of being like, okay, I'm going to like take my time and I'm going to get the shot that I want. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it's good to take some time and, and make sure that, uh, that you like it. But there's also like a, a bit of magic sometimes spray and pray because like you, you might catch something that you, you may mm-hmm. miss uh, here and there. But mm-hmm. it's kind of, uh, you know, whatever works for you, like that, that should be what, what you go with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I do agree in the, like, just going wild sometimes too in certain events. Like I love doing that when you go to like a music festival or something where there's a lot of people and a lot of things going on and you just like wildly snap and you always end up with like super fun, interesting stuff that like you didn't even see in the camera when you took it. So what, what's been one of your most fun like photographic moments or adventures kind of thing? Um, I think I really, I would say like street photography when you get that like thick lighting that you just like didn't expect where you like round the corner and you're like, this is perfect. The light is perfect. And like the people around are perfect. And you know, there's like a streetcar going through and it's just like that shot that you didn't like expect. Those are kind of my favorite, the unexpected ones. I think that, especially with street photography, like I literally just wander aimlessly around Toronto at like sunset, hoping for something like good. Um, And I'm really bad at remembering like really good spots. So I'm literally just honestly wandering aimlessly all the time. So I'm always really pumped when I, like I said, just you round a corner and it's like the light is perfect. And, or there's like something, some crazy art piece or something just like super fun that you haven't seen before. And you just like happen to catch it. I think that, Probably one of the most recent ones is I did last Christmas, I think it was. Um, I didn't have plans until later. So at like 7 a.m. on Christmas morning, I went to the distillery and it was like there wasn't a soul in distillery. And it was like super eerie, but also like snowy and beautiful. And I was like, this is not something that happens often because of the way the distillery district is and, and Toronto is always so chaotic. So it was just a really like cool moment where it was so quiet and I got a lot of really great shots. So that's really awesome. Yeah. The distillery mm-hmm. usually is so busy. Like it's yeah. hard to get something <laughs> cool in there. Yeah. Especially when it's like all the lights go up, it's, it's a tourist attraction. So it's like, you got to go at literally seven o'clock in the morning and hope that like nobody's there. Yeah. There was, um, one morning that I, I walked through the distillery, um, I had to drop my car off at Volvo to get some work done on it. And I decided to just like wander around and wait. Cause they said it would only be like an hour or so. And, uh, it was about like seven thirty, just about eight. And it was really super eerie though, because this like super dense fog had like settled in mm-hmm. and it made like all of the skyscrapers around um, the distillery look even creepier because they were just sort of like, I don't know, it looked like apocalyptic uh, with just mm-hmm. like you couldn't see how far they went. So it looked like they could have just been like endless skyscrapers kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then like walking through the distillery, it was just like super eerie because there was just this like thick fog. So you couldn't really see beyond like, I don't know, maybe... 40, 50 feet from like what the mm-hmm. camera was seeing. And it, it was kind of cool. Yeah. I actually probably have a very similar shot, maybe from that same time of the distillery district too, that it was just a morning I was happening to like walk through on my way to work. And it was the same thing. It was like so foggy and they have those creepy trees in there that they've like cut the limbs off. Yeah. Of. And I was like, 
this is perfect. This like creepy dead tree, like alley, all the fog. And it was like dark. I was like, this is, those are the shots that I love that you just like right place, right time. And you're like, this is amazing. Yeah. Like Toronto is so good for that kind of stuff. Like it's something I really miss about it. Uh, whenever I go back, I just, I forget how awesome it is. Just wander around. Like there's so many different things going on all the time there. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like I just spent so much time walking with with friends or like by myself, just checking things out in in off time. And yeah, it's, Mm -hmm. it's a cool, if you ever have a chance to go to Toronto, you guys should check it out because it's a really (laughs) cool city. Yeah, and definitely walk around. Don't, uh, I think that people just stick to certain places, but you got to wander this city because there's so much cool stuff and cool buildings and, you know, cool alleys that you wouldn't normally see without just, like, wandering aimlessly around around the city. So Absolutely. Like, you have to wander around there. Like, there's so much <laughs> crazy stuff. And, like, just even walking um, Queen Street. It, it's such a different when when you go from like queen east to like queen west it's just like you're going through different places even it's it's kind of crazy mm-hmm. even seeing different parts i think people really stick to like the queen queen west or king west but there's so many other fun places in the city and people never see it people that don't live in the city don't like adventure as much as they should because there's all, there's so many other cool places that that nobody sees other than the locals. Yeah, exactly. I, I really like um, the Ossington area. Um, that, mm-hmm. That's a pretty cool little part there to check out. And lots of really great restaurants. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Dundas. Like uh, Dundas West is kind of interesting. There's like that strip um, around like lands down there. And into Ronsi, mm-hmm. like Ronsi is pretty cool too. Yeah, yeah. Ronsi great. Ronsi super fun. Even like going through High Park, people miss like they do high park only when the cherry blossoms are happening, but like great, great park. There's also a lot of really just like cool parks. I'm also a big like cemetery person. <laughs> so like there's also so many cool like churches and cemeteries and like heritage buildings that you just got to like escape out of the downtown core and kind of like go, go a little more North, go up to, you know, St. Clair and wander down St. Clair is really cool too. And yeah, there's just, yeah, even east. Like, people skip the east a lot, too, and the east is really cool, but, yeah. People I mean, are always Queen West. <laughs> I I've, I kind of fucking love the east end, because, like, I lived at Kingston and Warden, so it's like, okay. you know, I, yeah. I, I was an east ender for a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but people never go out that way. It's like, Leslie feels super fun. Like, you have Woodbine Beach is all the way out there, and, like, all the yeah. parks out there, and there's a lot of great food and, like, breweries, and, like, you're just, people are missing out by... Like, they come here as tourists, and they're like, oh, like, I'm going to go see a Blue Jays game, and then I'm going to wander down Queen West. And I'm like, there's so much more to this city than yeah. just the downtown core. Check out Queen East. Like, the Fox Theater is really fucking cool over there. Um, mm-hmm. Like, the beaches are, are really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, even, like, the, the Kingston stretch there is, is – there's a lot of interesting stuff popping up there. Yeah. Um, what is it? Polson Pier is pretty cool too. Like down, yeah. down behind where T and T used to be. Um, yeah, yeah, and like Cherry Beach, it's like a secret. Nobody knows about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like there's so many of these cool places. But yeah, TTP, if you go all the way down there with the there's the lighthouse and people never wander wander down there. So Yeah, there's good so spots. Cool so many good there. spots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I miss all that. But with the cemeteries thing, have you ever had a chance to check out um, the big cemetery in Hamilton, like the one when you're driving into the city? And uh, No, Hamilton's a place I actually, for living in the GTA for so long, that I actually haven't spent a lot of time in. And I need to go because, again, like, I love street photography and there's so many cool heritage buildings there. And they also have, like, an abundance of, like, parks and hiking and I just need to, I need to get out there, but yeah, I'm like slowly ticking off all the cemeteries. It drives my boyfriend crazy because I'm just like, let's go to the cemetery. And he's like, what? Why? I didn't so, sign up for this when we started dating. Like yeah. This. Yeah. He's like, I didn't know you like dead stuff so much. And I'm like, let's go to the cemetery. <laughs> the older, the better. Like The thing that's wild though, is they're so fucking peaceful. 
And they're uh-huh. usually like pretty beautiful and lush. Like the one in Hamilton is really fucking nice too to go in the summertime because uh-huh. it's just yeah. like huge. Like you can fucking do a picnic there if you wanted to. Like it's uh-huh. it's that nice. Um, and it's also cool seeing because like the one in Hamilton is like wicked old because um, mm-hmm. Dundas was more prominent um, than Toronto originally because like Dundas used to be like the center of commerce for mm-hmm. um, that part of Ontario until um, they started moving train stuff out to where Toronto is. Uh, but like that's where a ton of like the original industry was. So there's lots of really cool like historic shit out in Dundas mm-hmm. and Hamilton. But that also means like there's some really fucking old dead bodies in yeah <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the cemetery there. And some of the like it's really cool seeing the different headstones and and stuff mm-hmm. like that um, from like the little tiny baby ones, which are always sort of weird and creepy, to like, yeah. Yeah, the really sure. big ornate ones and mausoleums. Mm-hmm. Like it's that that's really cool to see that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And like for me, like the creepier the headstone, like the more interested in it I am. I'm like, like does this have dragons carved into it? Like, like give me all the weird oldest tombstones. It's also just like I'm kind of a bit of a history kid too. So even just looking at all the the names that come up, like if you go to I think it's St. James where like all the Goddardams are are buried, and it's like these are the people that like ran downtown Toronto and you know, made all this money and basically owned distillery district. And it's just so interesting to, to see, but yeah, like super peaceful. There's not usually a lot of people because people don't just often wander around cemeteries. It's like usually me and my camera and then like some lady walking her dog and that's like it. So yeah, it's cool. It's just cool to see and see the history and, you know, really realize how old Toronto is and how long it's been here and how long people have been here. Yeah, that was what really struck me when when I moved out to Toronto from BC because like I I grew up in the the West Coast. I've been a West Coast kid like you know most of my life until I moved to Toronto, and um, it was wild seeing how old like Toronto and just also Canada because like you know Toronto, Montreal, stuff like like you know Ottawa. That was sort of like original Canada kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and I was just like, holy shit, like the West coast is like baby in Canada. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like there's, yeah. there's not a lot of really old shit here. Like there is out of East. And that was the other cool thing that I fucking miss from Toronto is the open door stuff. Like mm-hmm. when they do open doors, Oh man. Like I, I was kind of bummed to miss it this year because they had the, uh, the winter garden open again. And mm-hmm. the last time there was open doors, that wasn't open. And that was like one of the main places I wanted to check out because I've always been curious about like the, the Winter Garden and the Elton Theater. Um, but I did get to go see the uh, R.C. Harris water treatment plant out mm-hmm. in um, the beaches at the last yeah. open doors. And that was like fucking incredible. That place is something else. Yeah, I was not prepared this year. I should have, like, made a map. I feel like I missed a lot of places, and I really wanted to go to the the Rare Book Library, and I was so pumped on it, and then it was closed. And oh, I was shit. like, what? Yeah, like, they only had it open the one day, and I was like, that's kind of lame, but... Um, that place And I is... need, you need a car for it to do it, too, because it's like, you things do. are so spread out. I was like, I just adventured out with a friend, mostly, like, walking, and I was like, we fucked up. <laughs> like, I was so tired by the end of the day, and everything's so far apart, and I was like, oh, we should have, like, we should have just taken the car and drove around, because, yeah. But yeah, the book library, or, like, the rare book library, I was, like, so pumped for it, and then they were like, not today, and I was like, oh. Okay, cool. At the next one, you definitely have to do it. Like that, that was one that I did make it to open. I think it was Open Doors 2019 because I don't like mm-hmm. COVID kind of killed the, for a bit. Um, yeah. But the Rare Book Library, that was so fucking cool. Like not only to see like all the stuff they have in there, but just the architecture of it is, mm-hmm. is fantastic. Like it's yeah. um, such a I feel like building. I just hit a million churches. That was my jam as I was like, going for all the architecture and so I did of all the churches I did the Elgin theater which was beautiful and great and so jealous <laughs> yeah it was great it was great I was like a little it was 
chaotic downtown. So the first few ones I hit was like amazing. There was like no people in them. And as soon as we got down to Elgin, I was like, there is so many people in here. (laughs) I was like trying so hard to get cool shots. And I just wanted to be like, can everybody just like move (laughs) for like two minutes? Let me just get some shots. But I was still able to get some fun, some fun stuff, but yeah, it was cool. It was really fun. I actually love, um, open doors I, I did it Ottawa does it as well and Ottawa's is pretty cool too because they have a lot of like insane old buildings and you get to go in a lot of the parliament stuff so That's yeah cool. I try to do it every year but yeah this year I was like not not prepared to hit all the spots that I wanted to Hamilton does one too so like that could be an excuse next year to go to Hamilton yeah I need to just get out there it's not even that far Hamilton's not far I just need to like take a weekend and adventure out to Hamilton. Yeah. It's, it's a cool place. I really like Hamilton a lot. Um, I, I spent a lot of time there because like I had some like collaborative friends that we did a lot of work together that live out there. So I'd go like see them. Um, but there's lots of cool shit out there mm-hmm. and, and just like mm-hmm. the waterfalls and stuff. There's like cool stuff there. Um, if it's like another heat wave again, make sure to bring lots of water. Cause I didn't. And I got like yeah. a fucking heat stroke. <laughs> when it- yeah. Yeah. I'm not a summer fan. That's my thing too. It's like love to do street photography, but like today it was 40 degrees and I was oh, like, God. I'm going home. <laughs> like I don't even want to be outside. And it's just like, it's just so spicy outside. I was like, I can't do this. I'm going home. So yeah. Toronto gets spicy. Like, yeah, yeah. It's also random though. Like yesterday wasn't warm. Today they were like, "Sorry, it's forty degrees," and I was like, "This is perfect. <laughs> I love summer." <laughs> but was it crazy humid? It was too. Yeah, and I was inside in the air conditioning all day, so you walk outside and it's like instant death. So you're like can't breathe, and then you have to get on the streetcar with all the other sweaty people. So uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all in all fabulous afternoon <laughs> i do have to say though i miss the stinky street cars yeah i miss the old street cars yeah. you could open the windows and like but they yeah. were kind of stinky those old ones but Always. like the had... new ones are stinky too though so it doesn't matter that's fair yeah I, <laughs> I get like the ttc just has like an aroma to it um, yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, that'd be kind of hilarious if they wanted to like make money, they could do like, uh, you know, wad did TTC or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do miss those old street cars. They, uh, there's nothing better than just like driving through the city with the window open in the street car, but they, they did definitely get very warm with the no air conditioning. So they did. <laughs> yeah, good they- with the bad. They they were neat. I, I I missed those when when they took them out. I don't really like the the long boys. The long ones, yeah. Yeah, well, the air conditioning is nice, but yeah. They should just put air conditioning in in the little guys, like yeah. You know, I don't know. I agree. They thought. should just throw them on there. There's never enough street cars anyway. Like just keep them, just keep them in business and save th- us from being like sardines. <laughs> I think they ended up like recycling. A bunch of them, which is kind of sad. Huh? Like just scrap metal them? Yeah, or scrap like metal, and I think scrap on them. Oh. Like they they kept oh. a couple because like you can, and this is kind of a cool thing about the TTC. If you want to shoot movies or if you want to like have a party or something, you can rent like street cars or the subways hmm. or even a bus, and they hmm. have like a street car, like one of the the little guys that you can rent out and do like streetcar parties. Really? Does it drive you around or does <laughs> it, just, it like, <laughs> it, yeah, it drives you around. Like, I mean, you go on a streetcar track, so it's like, you can't yeah. fucking go wherever you want, but you like yeah. pick the track you want to go on. And like, I've seen it a couple of times where they've got like fucking disco balls and like crazy <laughs> lights and shit in a streetcar. Hmm. And it's just like bumping, which is kind of wild. That's a good way for the city to make money. Like well played Toronto. Keep those in business. Sounds like a great birthday party. It, it would be kind of wild. And it wasn't like crazy expensive. Like it was like maybe a grand or something to rent the streetcars. Hmm. The subway was more expensive. Um, That's fair. And then you can also like rent it. There's the secret subway station at. Um, Bay, I think, right? Yes, Bay, 
where there's like mm-hmm. the full on one down there. And that was kind of cool to see during open doors. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can rent that one too, if you want to like, you know, shoot mm-hmm. movie sets or I think some people have even like rented it as like a wedding venue. Cause they love the TTC <laughs> that much. <laughs> That's very Toronto of those people. <laughs> Hardcore. That was one of the ones I actually missed when we, uh, when we did the, the tour because it was so chaotic that I was like, I'm just going to skip the subway station and try to try something else. But I'm That's glad funny. it was cool. I was like interested to see if it was like architecturally cool or if it was more run down still. Cause I know they have a lot of those in New York and stuff where they're actually like insane and they look super crazy. So I was like interested to see what Toronto's looked like, but it, it- I missed it just it kind of looks just like a regular ttc station like it's huh. it's not really run down but it's kind of in, like to get down there you have to go through like there there's some like sketchy looking spots to get down there because they've closed off the access so mm. it definitely looks like you're going in a place you're not supposed to be going so hmm. that was kind of like a weird thing but mm-hmm. it was also a lot of fucking people so yeah like, and this was like before COVID when I went and I was already like, oh, get away from me. There's so many people. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. There's a few spots for that, that people just like crowded. Like the other one we wanted to do was um, at U of T, I think it's the physics building or something. You can go up to the roof and there's this crazy view of the city because there's not really any tall buildings around there. Okay. And so we ended up there and the lineup was like, out of the building and I was like I'm not waiting in a line for an hour to get a couple shots on a roof so I was like so we skipped that one too but yeah there was a few that I was just like this is chaotic where where did all you people come from I didn't know this was this popular because like in in Ottawa I think it's gaining popularity but in Ottawa the first couple years I did it I was like people are missing out there's not enough people here doing this and I think people didn't know what it was they were like what is this open doors um but yeah I almost missed that though when it was like super quiet and you didn't have to fight people for cool pictures <laughs> yeah it was like yeah, it was kind of an exclusive thing like no one really knows about it um, yeah. <laughs> yeah if you want a cool city view that doesn't have a wicked crazy lineup like that one of my favorites is the parkade in kensington market if you go up Mm. to like the roof of that it's got kind of a cool like view of the city like you know there's buildings there so it like obstructs a bit of it but it kind of like gives you like a toronto view which is is kind of cool i've always liked that Mm -hmm. spot and it's neat at nighttime you see the cm tower and shit nighttime for sure is always the coolest for rooftop shots i just need to make friends with more people that like live on the 50th floor of a condo (laughs) and just be like I just need to use your balcony for 10 minutes. <laughs> Give me a sec. <laughs> I mean, you could probably put out like a, a, a social media post or something. It's like in search of someone with a really high ass condo for like <laughs> yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. Call me on a foggy day, please. And I will be there <laughs> like, well, in a second. The, the one thing that I don't know if I was ever really proud of it, but I kind of just like stuck to it on principle I've never been to the CN Tower and <laughs> it, it just kind of like I didn't bother doing it the first year I was there and then like yeah after I'd been there for like five years I'm like I'm never gonna go like whatever like <laughs> I kind of hate heights I, yeah <laughs> it's it's also like I hate to say this because I feel like Toronto's gonna shame me but it's also like not that cool <laughs> like it's It's like you wait in line forever. And then the same thing, it's like a million people. It's just like super touristy. And it's like, I get it. Like tourists get, get your CN tower jam on, like do it. It's the same within Ottawa with the parliament buildings. Like the amount of times I've had to go up the parliament buildings with friends. And I'm like, like, I get, I get it. I've been here. Like this is the government. Like I'm I'm fine with it, but it's like, it's so touristy and people, I think we take it for granted. We take things like that for granted when we live in the cities and, and it's like, it is, it is cool. It is, it's a cool view. Like the edge walk sounds really fun. Like oh. would love to just like hang off the edge, but it's like, can I bring my camera while I do this also? Or like, yeah. That might be or a like, dropping risk though. Yeah, oh, so yeah, that? exactly. They'll be like, yeah, you can't take your camera cause you might drop it and murder somebody. So like not a deal. 
But apparently the way you cheat it is you go eat at the restaurant and then you get up into the sand tower for free instead oh. of waiting. Yeah, fun trick for <laughs> all the people listening. Yeah, but isn't it hella expensive to eat there and it's like mediocre food? So it's like you're still not winning. Yeah, that's true. I've never eaten there because I was like, I don't need to eat in a rotating restaurant. So, <laughs> and I don't love paying for mediocre food. So, <laughs> that's fair. I, I mean, I so I grew up in Calgary and we had like this, the like, you know, Calgary Tower. Ooh, <laughs> it's like, you know, a CN Tower's turd, but yeah. <laughs> I kind of feel like, you know, the CN Tower would just be like a bigger Calgary Tower, and I never really liked having to go to the Calgary Tower when I was a kid, so I was just like, yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I think it's like, again, like, touristy. Like, I I try to stay away from just like the touristy areas. When you live in a city, it's like, I don't need to be down there. <laughs> I don't need to be hanging around the CN Tower. And like a lot of my friends are like, let's go to Blue Jays games. And I'm like, meh, like, <laughs> I'm good. I don't need to go to a Blue Jays game. I have lots of friends that really love the shit out of baseball. And like, I'm happy for them. I'm glad they like it. But like, I don't fucking get it. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like the people like watching golf. Like, yeah. It's just, I don't know. I, I went to a Blue Jays game once because like I do tech work and we had this event where we like rented out a box and had all of our customers there and everyone's like, Oh my God, you get to go to a blue Jays game. And I'm like, it's just another day of work for me. Like, you know. <laughs> but I was very underwhelmed. Like, it's just kind of like, we're really high up in the boxes and it's really hard to see the tiny little ball. <laughs> you just yeah. kind of like see the guys run around. So I was just like, I mean, I used to play softball when I was a kid. That was fun, but this is a lot different. Yeah. I'm not a big, like, sport, like, watching person, too. So it's, like, same thing. I'm just, like, I don't want to go and watch people hit a ball and run around and pay a million dollars for a beer. So, (laughs) and, like, anytime I go places, it's predominantly for snacks. So it's, like, I don't want to wait in line for an hour for a poutine and, you know, a hot dog. <laughs> I can do that on the street of Toronto very quickly. What's your favorite snack place in Toronto then? Or wait. Oh man. Top five. Top five? Top snack five. places like restaurants or like snacks? Both. Oh man. I love, I, so I love any restaurant where you can like order multiple things. Like I don't like ordering like a single meal. So I do a lot of like, like Japanese Korean barbecue bomb because you get to eat a bunch of like different things. I love places like 416, like snack bar where it's like a bunch of like little plates. Um, man, snack there. I don't know if it's still there, but there used to be this place in Kensington called like ding dong snack market. And it was all these like, imported Asian snacks that you like can't get anywhere. And I don't know if it's still there because I haven't been to Kensington in forever other than that time that I saw you. I think it and I still love be it. There. Is it? Amazing. Yeah. I usually stop yeah. every time and just buy like an absurd amount of snacks. There's apparently a new one on Queen somewhere that has like the same type of vibe too. Um, where else do I love? Uh, what have I been eating a lot of lately? I just, yeah, anything quick and snacky. I like any barbecue. I'll have barbecue. Um, man, put me on the spot. I can't even. I love bond meat too. So, like, oh, man. Uh, any, <laughs> any bond meat, like, place, big fan. I've been really uh, also obsessed with dim sum. Like, I could eat dim sum every day and like, same thing. I love it. It's like a million little things and you can order so much stuff and then it's like, $30, which is amazing. So I go for dim sum as much as like physically possible. <laughs> um, <laughs> like all hours of the day doesn't matter. Not only breakfast. Um, yeah, that's probably, I've been eating a lot of like, there's this uh, Vietnamese restaurant right by my work. And I've just been eating a ton of their um, like bon mies and stuff. Cause I just can't get enough of it. And I would eat it every day. <laughs> Bon me is solid. Like, you, yeah, 
Like that, so that's one thing I miss so much about Toronto is like the food. Yeah. There's just so many different kinds of food and so many amazing places to go. And a lot of them aren't terribly expensive, which is yeah. also really nice. Like I think my number one spot that I like miss the most is hand moto. Oh yeah. Love it. The dino yeah. wings there. Oh, like, yeah. Just like, you know, sorry, vegans and vegetarians, but like, this is like, it's like a come to Jesus thing. Like you put that mm -hmm. in your mouth and like, you know, I've seen people weep eating them. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I brought one because like whenever people come visit, I'd always take them there and be like, you have to like eat this with me. And like one friend was like eating it. And I tried to like, she's like, Sh shut the fuck up. I just, I just <laughs> yeah. need a minute. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm just me and the Dino wing need some time. Um, yeah. That's the thing about Toronto too is like, you know, everybody thinks it's so expensive for food, but you just got to find the fun places too. And the, yeah. the not as, as popular, like you don't need to eat on King West, like go no, to Kensington, don't. like Kensington's Amazing. So that day you saw me, it was actually my birthday. And oh, a happy my belated birth birthday. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm like a Cinco de Mayo baby. So every year on my birthday, I do a taco crawl. Nice. So we taco crawled through Kensington and it was like, we spent no money because tacos are not expensive. And I yeah. ate like a copious amount of tacos and had a great time. And was like, by the time I saw you, I was like so full and like, we had to sit down and have like a beer because I was like, I like, I'm going to die. I think like this is, this is the end for me via taco. But yeah. And it's like, but you got to go to those places. You got to go to those like packed, like weird, like hole in the wall places are the least expensive and the best, most like authentic food in Toronto. Yeah. So like, Everyone raves about Mother's Dumplings, and Mother's is okay. Like, I, I'm okay with their dumplings. But mm -hmm. my fucking go-to, my favorite dumpling spot is Dumpling House. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. it's so cheap. It's got it's yeah. run by that grumpy old Asian dude that just, like, <laughs> yeah. sits there, like, snarling, reading his newspaper. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah Throwing just, dumplings at you, and you're like, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. It's just like... He, he spites everyone for being there, but he'll take their money anyways. Yeah. And those, Another great place too is, I don't know. If oh, sorry. You disappeared. Oh, just a sec. I don't know what happened. Oh, you're back. Good. Yeah, it's me. Sorry. I'm back. Oh, no <laughs> My phone is like sent a notification off and it was like having a mental breakdown, but, uh, Loga's Corner in Parkdale, if you haven't been, it they do momos, Ooh. so like Himalayan dumplings, and it's like $7 for 10 of them, That's and amazing. it's like the guy who owns it is also doing cash and just like loves everybody that comes in and is super pumped, and it's like so good and so cheap and like a little hidden, it's, it's getting more popular now, people are figuring it out. But it, uh, for the longest time, nobody knew about it. And I was like, this is amazing. Like, nobody knows. How do people not know about this place? Yeah. I, I remember that joint. Like, that's fucking a good spot, too. Um, Lolly Bella is also really great. It's the Ethiopian joint up on Bluer West. Um, oh, I don't know if I've been there. If you like variety... That's a mm -hmm. cool thing because you just get like this platter of like different stuff and you yeah. just get to share, which is like wicked fun and it's super delicious. I fucking love that joint a lot. If you mm -hmm. like Chinese barbecue, there's like, I think it's just called Chinese barbecue. It's it's on um, the east end by um, by the park over there. What fucking park is that called again? Right, like Riverdale Park? Yeah, yeah. It's it's like okay. in old Chinatown. So Oh, like on Gerard. Yes, it's right on Gerard. It's okay. just like um it's it's down like a couple buildings from the A and W that's on the corner of Gerard. And there's okay, two, I think I've been there. <laughs> there's two barbecue joints. It's not the one closest. Like right beside each other, right? Yeah, yeah, right beside yeah. each other. It's not yeah. the one closest to A&W. It's the one just a bit further. That one is so okay. good. Um, super cheap. It's like, 
think it's like eight or nine bucks and you get like, you know, a ton of meat, rice, vegetables. And yeah. uh, me and my friend David, we would always like after a photo walk, stop by there and then go sit on the ping pong tables at, uh, at, at the park. And, yeah. um, you know, that's a weird park too. That's like, if you like people watching, that's kind of a fun yeah. park to check out. And that's it, one of my favorite parks actually, because it's also not like, again, not as well known as like Trinity, like Trinity's always like chaotic. Oh, it's insane. We're, yeah. This park is like, you can still find a place. It's still got grass. Like <laughs> there's trees, like actual nature and yeah. yeah great and, people watching and a great sunset. And there's spot. the, on the view there too, like on, mm-hmm. on the east side of the, cause there's like the two parks, there's like rivers, mm-hmm. ri- what Riverside West and then East. The yeah. east side has like a really nice view of the city mm-hmm. um, up there, and the sunsets are freaking phenomenal there too. And even like the mm-hmm. twilight that you get there is is really mm-hmm. cool. Um, and then behind the the Humber River um, Health Center thing there or whatever is like one of the weirdest art sculpture installations I've ever seen. Like, have, have you gone back there and seen that shit? Yeah, which one is it though? It's like all of the weird colored skeleton muscly oh, yeah, people yeah. doing like <laughs> yoga and like fighting and yeah it's super weird and creepy yeah it yeah toronto's got some weird art though and it's always in the weirdest spot too like you round a corner and you're like oh my god what is yeah. that and you're like oh <laughs> weird art sculpture okay, cool. art. Yeah. yeah yeah ottawa's got one like that too i think toronto actually does too but i remember like right by our art gallery they were like oh we need an art installation and then like the city spent all like millions of dollars and it shows up and it's this like giant spider and it's like terrifying and hideous and it's got like if you stand under it it has like a literal like egg sack like hanging under it and i was like who bought this art piece like and it's so weird and it's so interesting but people are like why and i'm like i don't I don't know. Like, this is what we spend government dollars on, guys. Because it's art. Um, yeah. I think my favorite, most ridiculous art thing a government has spent money on is the ring in Calgary, Alberta. <laughs> I don't know if I even know what that is. It's the dumbest fucking thing ever. It's literally just a big blue ring on a pole next to the deer foot that they spent millions of dollars on and everyone's like why like it's just a big blue ring and it just it looks totally pointless and absurd and they were like oh my god look at her art calgary's fancy it's like no you're not like you're like the you know once a year you're the std capital of canada whenever stampede happens and yeah I know some art in the city. You're you're like, what? Why? But it's it's all art, and you have to appreciate it for what it is. But yeah, sometimes I have questions for the people buying said art. <laughs> like, what? Why that? What? What? What was the thought process? Uh, yeah. So, like, that's an interesting thing with with art, and uh, I I've wondered this a lot of times when friends have taken me to like galleries or like art shows and stuff. And like, I see art and I'm like, is this shit or am I just like dumb and don't get it? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that's true. It's hard. Like it's, it's all interpretation too, right? It's like something that somebody else absolutely loves. You could show up and be like, what the fuck is this? But it's like, you always got to take a step back and like appreciate it for what it is. Cause I find that too. Like I've had friends take me places and I'm like, I don't get it. Like, I, don't, I don't. And then I'm like, I'm like, am I not an artist? Like, and then I like second guess myself and I'm like, why don't I understand? But yeah, I mean, art is art. You can make anything art and anything can be art. And um, yeah, you just got to appreciate it for what it is, I guess. But <laughs> so here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. Do you think photographers are artists? I do think photographers are artists. I think too that like there's so many different, it's actually really interesting I would say to see now because I think I also know a lot of people that are like take a great shot and like don't need a filter and like somehow get these magical pictures without like, without any editing and any filter and the light is perfect and everything is perfect and like I'm like why I aspire to be that person. 
And then I see all these people that take absolutely like horrendous shots, but their editing abilities are like fucking insane. And it's like, they take this like, like wonky, uneven, like dull photo. And they like turn it into this like beautiful, colorful, like sharp, crisp, like amazing picture. And it's like, there's so many different like art venues within photography. So I definitely think there's, we're all artists for sure. And it's art like, yeah, I, I think so for sure. And I think that like, I run into this question a lot with doing boudoir because people either love it or don't understand it as well. And it's like, you know, people are like, it's nudity and it's, you know, how, it's how they, women. And how do they not understand it? I think people look at it like, like they don't, they're just like, Oh, it's just nudity on the internet. And it's like, you know, nudity is an art and, and, or it's, you know, people are looking at it the wrong way. And I think that a, like all bodies are beautiful and, you know, nudity is insane. And we came into this world naked and it's 2022 and we need to stop being offended by nipples and butts. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's like some people just don't get it. So I get that question a lot being like, why do you think this is art? And I was like, why is it not art? Like bodies are art. Like, why would it not be art? Yeah. Bo bodies are art. And there's beauty in all bodies. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think the, the stereotypical, like, accepted, like, you know, beauty standards are fucking terrible and toxic mm -hmm. and just, like, mm -hmm. ruin shit. Like, yeah. you know, I've, I've seen all kinds of, like, beautiful stuff with all kinds of different um, body types, which is, is cool. What? Mm -hmm. So what got you into boudoir? I'm so like, again, I grew up with a photographer dad. So like I've always had kind of nude models and stuff around the house. So for me, I've, I've never looked at nudity. Like I can separate the sexuality from the like boudoir and art part of it. Um, so I've just always been interested in it. I've always been interested also in like making women feel great or even just people like not even necessarily women, but making people feel good about their bodies. Because again, like you said, all bodies are beautiful. And I think that the beauty standards now are insane. And like the things I see on Instagram that are supposed to be beautiful. I'm just like, what is going on? Like, you know, there's so much body shaming and there's, you know, so much putting people down for their bodies. And I'm like, first of all, everybody needs to mind their own business. <laughs> and like, not comment on other people's bodies. So it kind of started as that is like, I've done a lot of self portraits and I was like, I can do this for other people and, you know, give them these photos that they're going to be able to cherish and like enjoy and, and feel, feel sexy and feel beautiful and, you know, have that art of themselves. Um, Cause I think every person should do that at some point and have those pictures of themselves. So like, you know, when they're 90 years old, they can be like, look at this great photo shoot I did when I was 25 and, you know, loved life and, you know, yeah. was doing all these great things. So that's, yeah, that's kind of what I got into it. And I, I also, um, there's not a lot of like female boudoir photographers. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's tough to get naked in front of anybody. And it's tough to get naked in front of, you know, somebody that you don't know. And I think I try to make it a little just more like comfortable and understanding and easy and you know I'm really accommodating when I do it so it's like we can do it at a studio we can do it at your house we can do it at my house like it's as comfortable as these people are it's like totally up to them and you know if they don't want me to post things I don't post them and yeah I just think that everybody should do it once at least once everybody should have some nude photos of themselves <laughs> It, it is an interesting experience. Um, like I've shot some people nude and decided that like I should flip it around and let someone shoot me. Cause it's like, yeah, if, if I need, like if I want to be comfortable shooting with people and I want people to be comfortable shooting with me, I should also be comfortable if the tables are turned. And um, yeah, so I, I did a, a shoot with a friend of mine where, um, we kind of took turns with it and it was an interesting experience. Cause like, I, I definitely have like a lot of, um, dislike for my physical. 
<laughs> appearance. So that that was like a lot of work to get over. But the photos were really cool and it was an interesting experience. And it's like <laughs> something I, I should do more of uh, for like personal exploration kind of thing. But I agree, everyone should have photos where they feel good about themselves and stoked mm -hmm. and um yeah that's that's a wonderful service you're offering for them yeah yeah and it's fun and it's like it's something i really enjoy and like i think it's just yeah it's fun to make people feel great about themselves and it's also like fun to get that like amazing shot where when they see it they're like that like i didn't know i looked like that or like you know i can't believe you made like you know, I hate this about my body and you made it look like amazing. And it's like also seeing your body through like somebody else's eyes, because again, we, we're all full of like self doubt and, you know, so much criticism for ourselves and our own bodies. And when you have somebody else take your picture and like maybe take a picture of like an angle that you didn't think would be nice. And it like turns out. So I just did a friend a while ago, the one I've posted kind of most recently. And she, when she saw the picture, she was like, Holy shit. Like these are amazing. She's like, I didn't, you know, she's like, I didn't know how they were going to turn out. And she's like, I've seen your photography and I know it's great, but it's like, she's like the, she's like the way you caught like the light and the way you did this. She's like, it looks amazing. And like, I didn't think they'd turn out like that. And I'm like, yeah, what I do, <laughs> I'm just here to like, try to make you, you know, feel great. And it's, it's mostly about that and making that person feel good and comfortable. And like you said too, it's good to do it yourself because then you also like understand what those people are going through when you're shooting them. Cause it's one thing to like take naked pictures of somebody, but it's another thing to be naked and be like, Oh my God, like this is what they feel like. This is, you know, how they feel. And it's, it's it can be a very intimidating situation mm -hmm. too. So like got to work into it, got to work up to it. it. And I've kind of, found it's, it's a little bit intimidating on, on both sides too. Cause like, um, I never set out to like take pictures of naked people. <laughs> that wasn't my goal when I started doing photography. Um, but then a friend of mine was like, you should really start shooting with people. Um, she's like, your street photography is really cool. And she's like, I think you'd have like an interesting eye for shooting with people. And I was like, I don't really want to, cause I don't like the whole like guy with camera thing and shit like that. And I didn't want to get mm -hmm. like lumped in with that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. Um, but like she bent my arm enough and I was, we did a shoot together and it was cool. And then the second time we shot, she's like, all right, now boobs. And I was like, well, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh my God. Okay. This is what we're like, doing? I mean, okay. Like, you know, if that's what you want, we'll take pictures of that. Um, mm -hmm. But it kind of threw me for a loop too. Cause like I wasn't expecting boobs. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it is one thing taking pictures of like scantily clad outfits and things like that. But I was just like, all right, okay, this is, this is happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny that it always too, like, so the way I do it is like, we usually start pretty like dressed and like, as the shoot progresses, they like become more confident and they like get more naked. And I've had a few that like, I didn't think that it was going to go there. And by the end they were like, did you like do a couple full nudes? And I was like, sure. Like whatever you want. I was like, yeah. whatever you're most comfortable with, like, I always tell them, I was like, bring a million outfits and, you know, try them on and see how you feel. And we can do a test shot. And if you're not loving it, then we'll move on. But yeah, it's like, it's funny how like a lot of them, once they like gain that confidence and they have fun and they've gotten a couple of fun poses in, they're like, okay, now I'm naked. And you're like, all right, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's like now, now it's time for the weird stuff. Let's, let's, yeah. let's get weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like, it's fun to like see people's confidence also grow throughout a photo shoot, like going from starting like almost fully covered to being like, here's my bare butt. Like, let's do this. And you're like, get it. Let's get it. It's like, I need to immortalize this dump truck. So when I'm like 80, yeah. I can appreciate yeah. what I <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know we're, we're going to be such a weird generation of like all of our kids and our grandkids are going to be like, my mom's pictures are naked on the internet. And you're going to be like, yeah, there's yeah naked pictures of me on the internet. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, but I'm hoping that they, it's also like people are going to be over like being offended by nudity in the next few years. And I hope that our kids and our grandkids are like, can be more normalized by nudity and, not be so weird and 
scared of nipples. I really hope so too, because like the the fact that like nudity is so sexualized in in North American culture creates so many problems. Like it's just mm-hmm. just because someone's naked doesn't mean it's a sexual thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so like that blends into so many problematic areas of like people attacking people's looks, sexual mm-hmm. assault, like all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff just because it's like, Oh, well it's sexual. Um, it's not like yeah. anytime. It doesn't I, have to be. Yeah. It, like, well, it doesn't it, have to be. And, and mm-hmm. oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, it doesn't have to be. And it's like, it, it always seems to like you have people that take it that place and you're like, that's not what I was trying to do <laughs> with, with this picture. No, not at all. And in, in like, you know, unfortunately, I think it all stems from like, you know, Puritan sexual rep, uh, repression that like, you know, the underpinnings of like North American society have mm-hmm. that like, you know, I mean, I grew up like Roman Catholic. So like I had like the the Roman Catholic guilt for a long time. And like, there's like moments where it's like I still feel like guilty about like jerking off because like I'm upsetting God for like whatever <laughs> reason. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, that shit runs deep. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Religion. Not great. (laughs) Not not great. And not uh, great. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's, I always think about this story that a friend of mine told me, uh, he's like a rapper from Toronto and, uh, he did a tour in the UK years back and he was watching like daytime TV before they had to do a show. And he was just like watching this game show. And then all of a sudden, this dude was just like naked and his like dick was waving around and he lost his fucking mind. He's like, what the fuck is this shit? And he's yeah. like go- going to the guy that was like he, he, from the UK that they're staying with. And he's like, dude, why is there like a fucking wicked dong waving around at three in the afternoon on like daytime TV? And he's like, mm-hmm. what's the big deal? It's just a dick. And he's like, yeah, but what if kids see it? And it's like, what if they see it? Like <laughs> they uh, also have dick. Like- yeah. <laughs> and he's like, so this is just normal for like dicks to be out on daytime TV. And the guy's like, yeah, like what's wrong with like nakedness? And like it, it threw him for a loop. And I always thought about it. It's like, yeah, like I think this problem with sexualizing nudity and all of that is a, is a huge problem for Western society. But like, you know, mm-hmm. other like, you know, countries don't really give a shit about it. It's just like nakedness is nakedness. Yeah. Um, and like when when I've shot with with, uh, with people and uh, you know they've gotten nude, like it's never felt sexual for me with, with that either because it's just like well whatever. Like yeah. I mean, <laughs> one of the most hilarious times I was doing this shoot and the model was like naked and she was like talking about like diarrhea and like all of this <laughs> other stuff. <laughs> You're like, this is the least sexy naked person. <laughs> like not, <laughs> not into this. And it, it was yeah. just hilarious. Cause like we're killing ourselves laughing about like the, some diarrhea stories she was saying. And um, I'm like, there's going to be some perv out there that sees these pictures and thinks they're all sexy. But like, for me, it's always going to remind me of this diarrhea moment. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's so funny that like the amount of like DMs that I get on my boudoir stuff is insane. And it's like all just these men being like, oh, do you have an OnlyFans? And I'm like, this is a photography account. Like if I had an OnlyFans, like my name wouldn't be Luna Moss photography it would be like big juicy butts here's the link below so i'm just like where do you get (laughs) off like asking me for nudes like i don't understand i'm like i don't so i sell prints and boudoir is the i refuse to sell boudoir prints like i won't i'm not gonna make money off of somebody else's naked butt like that's just how i feel about it it's like if I do a shoot and i charge you and here's your pictures i'm not gonna sell those prints to like anybody else so it's you know, it's, it's weird that people reach out to me for that stuff, but I'm also like, you are it. Like, did you look at my profile? There's also like 800 pictures of the CN tower. Like I'm not just out here taking pictures of solely butts and like, this obviously isn't an only fans account, but it's unfortunate that our society is, is that way. in like North American society, cause you're right in Europe, it's totally different and it's nudity is seen totally different. And and I hope that we get there <laughs> because I, so I do think it would solve a lot of like problems, hopefully. Um, and I'm sick of getting like shit on for 
shooting boudoir because people are still weird about it. And I'm like, it's 2022. Like, can we just move on? And again, like, I think that like my parents were like hippies and my dad was a photographer. So like, you know, and I grew up with new models around the house. So it was never something for me that I was like, Oh, like it wasn't always sexualized. I always could see the art behind it. And it's, I wish more people had that experience because yeah, no, people I, need to calm down. People <laughs> do need to calm down. And I, <laughs> I need to ask you a huge favor though. If you ever do decide to open up an only fans account, you have to call it big juicy butts. Click here. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. I like great name, and they'll be like, "This is only," and it'll only be butts, and only be big juicy butts. Not even my own butt. It'll be all butts. That would be no amazing. discrimination. Yeah, Just juicy butts. Just juicy butts. I wonder how much money I could make off <laughs> only juicy butts. Though I'm like, why do I do photography? I should just have an OnlyFans. Like this could be a wild twist on it. Is you could call it big juicy butts. Click here. And have all of the pictures private, so they have to subscribe to see it. But then when yeah. they subscribe, it's all pictures of like juicy cigarette butts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like fresh, like lipstick <laughs> cigarette butts. I know. <laughs> and then they'd be like, "What the fuck? You bamboozled me!" And I'm exactly. like, "Oh, you already, you already paid." I was so. like, "I got your fucking money." <laughs> yeah, enjoy these big juicy butts. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I need an OnlyFans. Like I'm going to, not making any money doing this. I got to switch careers here. I mean, if I could get away with an OnlyFans, I'd probably do it, but I don't think anyone would pay for this. But it's like, I've got know, friends like, that do like sex work and shit and I've heard their stories about like how much money they make. And I'm like, yeah, fuck if like, I would probably like blow a dude or two for that much money. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some of them are killing it. Like, I also have like a lot of sex, sex worker friends too, and I'm like, fuck, I am in the wrong industry. Like, right? and like, it, they're so nonchalant about it. They're like, well, you know, I made thirty thousand dollars last month, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> what? I'm like, what? They're like driving their Porsche, and I'm like, excuse me, like, <laughs> just out here grinding. And she's like, I didn't work for three months, and I'm like. What? Like, what am I doing with my life? I well, should have capitalized on it during COVID when nobody could go out and do anything and everybody was spending on OnlyFans. I missed the boat. I mean, people still are spending money on it. And, and it's wild, though, because, like, people be like, oh, those sex workers make, like, poor life choices and things like that. And it's just, like, not the people I know. Like, well, you know, also work is work. So like, shut it. <laughs> exactly. Like, I mean, I sort of metaphorically suck dicks for a living. Um, I, we all kind of do in, yeah. in some way, shape or form. So like, you know, why not be properly compensated for it? Um, yeah. And That's it's real. Also another thing in 2020 that we need to like get over is sex work. Like, yeah. Again, mind your own business. I <laughs> feel like you don't have to participate. <laughs> so, well, I but mean, there's people out there that want to. <clears throat> I mean, the irony with it, too, is the people that are probably most vocally against it are people that are taking advantage of it as well, too. Mm -hmm. And of it's course. just like, you know, sorry you have guilt about, like, your sexual whatever you need from these people, but don't shit on them for you having a fucking yeah. problem with it. Because, like, you know. Yeah. It has nothing to do with them. They're just living their lives and also hustling, like. Yeah. I think of people, it's like a lot of people are bitter also about how much money they make. And I'm like, they're, they're getting it. They're out there. They're hustling. They're working super hard. It's not easy work. No. And it's even with OnlyFans, like there's so much work behind it. Like, it's not just like taking pictures and putting it on the internet. It's like, you know, you have to have all these relationships and you have to constantly have new content and you know, you're, you're back and forth with clients and it's like it's not easy. And if I don't know why people think it's easy, it's insane and it's hard work and they deserve every dollar that they've made and people need to get over it. <laughs> really. And, and I mean, in both of those professions, you have to deal with men and yeah, <laughs> Which we all know are the worst. So <laughs> they're so fucking insufferable and needy. And then like the minute you're not meeting their needs, they're like, Oh, you're a bitch. Fuck you. Yeah. cunt!" And it's just like, go fuck yourselves. Like, yeah, honestly. You know, I'm sorry that your mom told you you were a special little boy and the world belonged to yeah. you, but the world does and not you didn't, fucking belong to you. <laughs> yeah, and you didn't get enough hugs as a child. I'm sorry, but like, yeah. 
figure it out and go to therapy yes. <laughs> and try again tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> go to therapy, do some mushrooms. If you've got the yeah. money and means, go do some ayahuasca or something. You know, yeah. fucking go to like a, a sound bath. Anything. Find, find God. I don't care. Just like do something about it. Yeah. Stop being shitty. Exactly. Like there's a, I don't under, I, well, yeah. I, we live in like a society, unfortunately, in, in North America that just like promote shittiness. Yeah. Um, which kind of just, it really bums me out because like this week has been a weird one because there's a friend of mine. Um, She's like one of the most caring people I've met uh, as of late. And she works her ass off as like an educator. And she was super bummed out to like discover that like even though she works full time and like kills herself doing it, she's now like in the poverty line. Mm -hmm. And just gets shit on all the time. And like, you know, she's just struggling to sort of make ends meet. And that shouldn't be a thing now. Like, yeah, we shouldn't be having to deal with like that kind of pay inequality. We shouldn't be having to deal with like sexism and racism and like all that kind of stuff. And like, you know, the ramping up of like LGBTQ plus hate lately is Mm -hmm. also just like, it seems like we're regressing a lot. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And all that stuff in the state too, like taking away abortion rights and and all of their mass shootings. I'm like, what the fuck is going on like are we just like going back in time and it's like the hate is insane and it's you know it's insane that you know we can't make ends meet and on top of not making ends meet you know there's so much equality and it's just like it doesn't make any sense to me I feel like I'm constantly confused and I'm constantly just like what like what is happening like I'm constantly like I'm a big like news reader and I feel like I need to like learn to like not (laughs) read so much news because sometimes I'm just like, like, I don't understand. I literally just read this meme before this started about like they, they passed a new law in Florida that a judge is allowed to decide if a woman, an underage woman is mature enough to get an abortion. What? So, so you can decide if she's, she's in, too immature to get an abortion, but we're just going to give her a child instead. Like I was just like, so I need to like read more on it and find more on it. Cause I read it really quickly before we started. And I was like, Florida, <laughs> like, what? Florida, what the fuck? You're like the asshole of America. Like what is happening? I mean, like, I don't understand. Maybe even the asshole of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Florida's the worst. Like Florida is like the embodiment of O'Doyle rules from Billy Madison, like, yeah, you know, it, yeah, (laughs) I just don't get it. I do think, I feel like we're regressing and I feel like even COVID, like talking about just people in general is I've noticed too, how much meaner I feel like people are. It's like the good people made it through, but also like all of the terrible people really like showed their true colors and they did and are like, still not great <laughs> you're like why is everybody so mean all the time like well i, I think a big part of it and, and one thing i've noticed is just that there's a a, a lack of community like a, a mm-hmm. lot of people are struggling because like they don't there's not really a sense of community a lot of people have like glommed on to like social media to try and like fill that void but um especially through something like what we've gone through with the pandemic that's not enough like, you know, you, you need to have like a physical community, people that you can, mm-hmm. you can turn to. And, um, you know, sadly we don't have a lot of that. Like we've mm-hmm. become just as the, the way our society has been shaping through like the, the modern technologies and the advancements and stuff, as much as it's connected us virtually, it's kind of segregated us physically. Mm-hmm. And, um, so a lot of people are like lashing out about that cause, cause they don't, um, they don't have that sense of community. They don't feel connected mm-hmm. to something. And mm-hmm. that's something that I'm really grateful for the photography world for, um, because it's allowed me and in several people I know to tap into this community of people. Um, these, these like-minded folks that are also all searching for, you know, what does it mean? 
how do we get through it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm eternally grateful for that because, you know, I, even before COVID, the photography community um, was a powerful force of good for me and in in my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I try to foster that kind of stuff to like encourage other people to like either join this community or like find a community where they can feel accepted and like, you know, encouraged and, and things like that. But we just need more of that instead of people shitting on others. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I hate to admit it, but I'm a little tiny bit addicted to TikTok. Um, <laughs> I have not jumped on the TikTok train yet. I think I'm like, I have a hard time keeping up with Instagram. I was like, I cannot have any more social media. Like I'm not good at it. So I don't really do much on Instagram other than like post this stuff and like sometimes post photos like TikTok is like sort of taken over my like mindless scrolling moments. Um, but I kind of find it interesting because you sort of see this like microcosm of like what's going on around the world kind of thing. Um, and one of the latest trends that I've been noticing is like there's all of these like really shitty dudes making really shitty comments to like, you know, the, mm. these women and just like, you know, fucking cutting them down for like they shouldn't have cut their hair that way or they shouldn't have worn that dress or they shouldn't have done that and i am digging this trend that's happening where these women are just like what the fuck like who who do you think you are to make it so they'll like do a stitch where it's like they have that person's comment and -hmm. then they'll like go to the person's profile and be like okay, why shouldn't I cut my hair? Like, what's up with you, Captain Bullcut? Like, <laughs> you know, go fuck yourself. Like, yeah. who, who are you to yeah. judge me? Or, like, who cares if I, like, you know, want to wear this dress? I feel good in it. And yeah. I kind of like that clapping back because, you know, so many of these, like, shitty dudes out there, just they feel like they have this entitlement that their fucking mm-hmm. opinion it matters and like mm-hmm. you know, they can just like couch comment on how these people should be living their lives. And then mm-hmm. they're so shocked when like someone's like, no, go fuck yourself. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. I, there needs we're to be really creating. That. Yeah. We're really creating a culture of like bad bitches too. And I think yes. that like women are really like, like we don't, we're not here to like please men anymore. And I think that like there are men out there having a hard time with this obviously. And it's these men putting down, strangers on the internet and it's like first of all go fuck yourself like none of your business but it's like hilarious to see these women clap back for sure because it's just like a it's deserved and like even cat calling like watching women clap back to cat calling too like who are you to say anything about me because i walked by you like just don't even talk to me (laughs) like don't look at me don't talk to me don't make eye contact with me like go on with your life but it's so interesting to see that. It sucks that I think that there's still that culture of like, like you said, it's like then when we clap back, people are like, oh, she's a bitch or oh, she's this. And it's like, you're an asshole. First of all, you made those shitty comments in the first place and you're just mad that some woman is here calling you out and calling you out on your shit. People don't like being called out on their shit. That's the problem too. No, they don't. And and I think like people need more of that. Cause um, I agree. cat calling is just like, I, I don't fucking get it. Um, I've been in groups where like guys have done it and I'm like, are you fucking serious? Like we okay. all look like assholes now because you decided uh, to like, you know, comment mm-hmm. about someone's butt or something like, mm-hmm. you know, and has anybody gotten <clears throat> a date from that? Like, I'm sorry. Like if you drive by me and you make a comment about my ass, like, do you think I'm going to hop in your car and be like, daddy, take me home. Like where, <laughs> like, I like, has somebody tell me like has that worked like has somebody gotten a date like just I need like I need to see the facts like I like every time it happens I'm like who who is like this is gonna work this girl's gonna want to date me because I made some disgusting comment about her ass as I drove by in my fucking souped up Honda Civic. Like, get the fuck out of here, Kevin. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Kevin. I, fucking I, like, I also feel bad. I have a really good friend, Kevin, and I always call shitty dudes Kevins, and I'm like, I'm sorry, Kevin. Like, you're not a Kevin. I don't know why you're named Kevin, but... Yeah, yeah. Karens and Kevins. The Karens and the Kevins of the world. 
Karen's, Kevin's, Chad's, Todd's. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a shit. I know one good Chad and I feel bad for him that like, you know, a lot of people use Chad's as like a douchebag name. Um, but yeah, that shit doesn't make sense. Like I look back at when I was a kid in high school and I was like fucking embarrassed looking back on like how I behaved. I had no fucking idea how to like handle. None of my friends had any fucking idea. And like none of it worked either. Like, so <laughs> in high school, we used to go cruising for chicks in like the town across from where we lived and five of us would pile into a five seater car and go cruising for chicks. And it's just like, how is this going to work at all? Like, you know, even if we were to find someone who would be okay to get in a car with five strange, awkward, gangly teenage boys, where the fuck are they going to sit? Cause there's five of us in this car. It's not going to mm-hmm. work. And it never yeah. did. It never, ever, ever worked. And I just look back and I'm like, it's so fucking embarrassing. And yeah, I felt like even back then, I remember feeling a little bit embarrassed about it, but it's just like, you know, you're going like, you don't want to sit at home on a Friday or Saturday. So it's like, you're going to go hang out with your friends, but it's just like, mm-hmm. you know, this is fucking dumb. Um, but it scares me a little bit how easy it seems to be for so many men these days to sort of, flip over to that incel side when Mm -hmm. someone claps back against them or things like that. And um, it's also something that that, like kind of bums me out that like people can't appreciate like boudoir stuff and, um, you know, fine art nude and things like that without getting like creepy and sexual about it. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, there, there should be none of that. Like it's, for the most part, just, like, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, or just know your know your place. Like, don't yeah. go to like a boudoir photographer's Instagram and be like, "Ooh, send pics of butts." And I'm like, yeah, not in the right spot. But like, find the OnlyFans accounts and go there. Like, that's that's what they're selling. But it's like, it's yeah. unfortunate that there is no. It, there's like sometimes no differentiating those two things it's like it all gets grouped in and it's like it's a picture of a butt like and it's like yeah but there's there's differences there's differences in the art of it and exactly. and i still think like all the pictures that women take for only fans still art they're still killing it Absolutely. but it's like you're doing it you're monetizing it in a different way and that's totally fine but yeah it's unfortunate that like it's still so judgy out there about like nudes and it should nudity be. and no People need to get over it, like I said. <laughs> yeah, like, th- they should. And, you know, I think it's bullshit with the censorship stuff that's going on on platforms as well, too, because, like, what, like, how is a nipple offensive? Like, I don't, I don't understand no. it. Like, it, no. it makes no sense. Um, like, I don't understand why nipples are offensive. I don't understand why butts are offensive. And, like, the only, like, genitalia i would feel would be offensive if i was like scrolling through was like you know some random like fucking dick pic or something catching up it's like you know wieners are weird looking yeah nobody also wants dick pics i don't know why men are like oh i'm gonna send a picture of my boner to this girl and it's like right first of all like they're all awkward i've never seen a dick pic and been like damn I'm going to hop on that dick. It's like, I don't like, don't send, <laughs> don't send dick pics. Like, and don't send unsolicited dick pics. Like give me a warning. Don't just like drop a dick into my DMs. Like calm down. Yeah. Like it's but, nice to have a warning. Like a friend of mine sent me a, a racy photo the other day. And like, you know, she sent this, like, you know, right before she sent the photo, it had like a, like, asterisks ns like not safe for yeah, work like asterisk. a disclaimer yeah yeah <laughs> like, like she said like so she like at the start photo and then at the end so that like you know if i'm looking at my phone and i haven't opened my messages it, it says like not safe for work and mm-hmm. I, I have a heads up of what to expect in there like yeah. i i couldn't imagine what it's like to receive 
just wild dick pics out of nowhere where you're like, oh, I'm going to check my Instagram messages today. And it's just like, dick. yeah, it's not great. <laughs> like unsolicited. And you're like, oh, yeah, I just don't know. But also like back to the, the censorship thing too on Instagram. Like it's also, if you want to put your dick on the internet, fine, yeah. whatever. But it, it's crazy how how censored it is. Because even like, it, I feel like Instagram really like picks and chooses also. Like yeah. I don't put anything up crazy. Like I don't even think I have any nipples up. Like I'm very cautious about what I put up because I constantly get pictures taken down. And I constantly get the message of like, you do this again, your account's going to be shut down. And it's like, really, it's super discur- all the time, constantly. Like, like once a week I get a message and they're like, we're going to shut you down. Like you got to stop posting this. And I'm like, there's other accounts, other boudoir accounts out there with like straight coochies on there. And I'm like, how, like they posted a vagina and I posted like, a moody dark butt pic where you can't even see anything. And it's, it's like, yeah, Instagram isn't great for the little people. Like I feel like if you get to a certain amount of followers, they kind of just like let you do whatever you want. But until then they make you like work for it. And I'm, I'm already not great at Instagram and I'm not great at like consistently posting. And now you have to make reels and like, I can't do it. I'm not good at it. Um, and then to get those messages or like getting shadow banned, like I am, constantly shadow banned where I'll post a story and it'll get like seven views. And I'm like, how is this even like physically possible that I only got seven views on this? And and it's actually trickling down to like, so even my boyfriend has noticed like if he posts me and tags me in something because my personal account, my photography account are attached, he actually notices like a decrease in views too. And I'm like, like Instagram is only catering to if you have like a ton of followers and, and it's so hard to get to that point. And, and it's like people spend all this money buying followers and it's like, I don't want to buy followers. Like I want people that legitimately want to be here, but sure. I'm also not being viewed because I'm like shadow banned for butts every day. <laughs> so <laughs> like, and I try to like mix it up. I'm like, here's a fucking church. Like, is that okay? I'll post the church. And then, Maybe next week we'll put some more butts up, but yeah. What about censorship on Instagram? Yeah, a a butt in a church. I feel like that would send Instagram through a spiral. They would be like, "We don't know, we don't know how to react." Like, do we take it down? It's got Jesus in it, but also a butt. Like, what do we do? Or what if you dressed up a butt like a church? Like a church, drew a church on a butt, and I'd be like, "Yeah." Jesus butt? Like, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Tag hashtag Jesus. (laughs) <laughs> hashtag faith like just send the religious community through a spiral or or paint oh like a God. fake like jesus birthmark on someone's butt and just be yeah. like the second coming question mark like, i'm gonna start tagging churches instead of toronto <laughs> like just just really yeah i'd be like they'd be like you need to get off instagram ma'am you're done here <laughs> like well and that's something that's weird about instagram too so it's like A couple years ago, I was like, I really gave a shit about like engagement and followers and all that. And I really wanted to hit like 10K because I felt like Mm -hmm. you're not anyone until you hit like at least 10K. And now I'm just like, whatever. Most of the people that have like 10K or like 100K or whatever, they probably bought that shit. And Mm -hmm. it's not like real true engagement. Mm -hmm. And um, I found I felt a lot healthier about using Instagram when I stopped giving a shit about the engagement Mm -hmm. and uh, just being like, whatever I put shit that I like here. If other people Mm -hmm. like it, cool. If not, whatever, fuck you, Instagram. Yeah. That's um, the thing too is like, you gotta, Instagram's so weird about everything. Even like, so I've talked to a couple, even like social media managers to be like, what do I do? Like, what the fuck do I do? And they were even like, you know, you need to pick, a genre of photography. And I was like, I don't want to do that. Like I want to be able to shoot what I shoot. And they were like, well, that's why you're not going to like gain followers because it's like, you need to have like a boudoir photography account or like, so they're basically telling me I need to have like two separate accounts, like one for street photography and then one for boudoir. And I'm just like, dude, I can barely keep up with like the one account that I have. So it's the same thing. I just like, 
I turn off the like count. Like I don't even care. I don't want to see the like count. Like I post what I like, yeah. you know, I like my photography. I think what I do is great. And whoever sees it, sees it. And I always think too, like quality of like, so like when my photographer friends like my pictures, like that counts as more than one like for me. Mm. So <laughs> I'm like, you know, if people are there that are doing photography professionally are liking my pictures, I'm like, that's all I need. Like somebody out there that's also an artist, like liking my stuff is more, more than like needing the likes and needing the follows. Cause Instagram hates me and hates butts. <laughs> so. <clears throat> well, I think Instagram hates everyone. Yeah. Like I blame it, Mark Zuckerberg. Fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah. Now we're both shadow banned. Cause I <laughs> said fuck Mark Zuckerberg Whatever. on our live stream. All, all you need to do to make it up to him is like, send him a bottle of sweet baby rays and yeah. it'll be all fine again. Or be yeah. like, I'll invite you over to my barbecue cookout. Um, <laughs> I dislike him a lot, but I think I dislike Elon Musk even more than Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, for sure. That man is trash. Oh, absolute trash. Like that guy, he's like the fucking biggest charlatan of our time right now. Like, Yeah, he's the worst. He's a super villain. Like, absolutely. He, he's he just, absolutely a super villain. Yeah. And but he, all of them, like him, Zuckerberg, yeah. Bill Gates, like they're just like weird fucked up super villains in their own way. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, I, I mean... I, I had a bit of respect for Bill Gates at one point, but like, you know, with his, the, the latest shit coming out that like, yeah, he was uh pals with the pedo Island guy. Well, the one that didn't kill himself. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that's a bit sketchy and not, not surprising. And yeah, I don't know. We don't need billionaires. Like, you know, no, them. like, can we just like make sure that when they die, their money just gets like distributed. That should be a rule. Or Once just, you're a billionaire, you don't you don't get a will. Like the country gets your money, and they get to distribute it amongst the people. Or just even while they're alive, like there's there's no need for like yeah. billions of dollars when like people are like legit starving. Like fucking mm -hmm. Elon said that he would solve world hunger. Like what last year or something? Like because it would be he hasn't done shit about that. No, you know, now he's buying Twitter to. or whatever. Whatever. Fuck those guys. If they yeah, want to really do Twitter something, too. yeah. Ugh. If they want to really do something, invest in the arts, get some more culture stuff going. Like bring music programs back into schools, yeah. uh, bring art programs back in, bring back like dark room stuff like that. Yeah, you know, that that would help a lot of the things we're having right now because yeah, people would be able to do creative expression and yeah. or like free education. Like yes. let's start there. <laughs> like free education because not all of us can afford to go to crazy expensive universities and there's well, so much talent out there that doesn't get to go to school. Yeah. And then even the people that do go to crazy expensive universities don't end up being able to do anything with it afterwards. Yeah. And it's like, cool. Mm -hmm. I have like over a hundred grand of student debt and I can work at Starbucks. Rad. Yeah. 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 You just end up in school for something you have like, I think we're like forced into school after high school and it's like you need a minute to figure out what you're doing and what you want to do. And, and you're right. Like the amount of people I know that have incredible student loans that aren't even working in the field that they went to school for. I'm just like, why? Like now you just have all this debt and yeah, you yeah. took poli sci and now you work at a bank. <laughs> like I don't understand. I don't know. We just need to like all become communists. <clears throat> yeah kidding no no, no. <laughs> just <laughs> everything's free let's just free school free art free like just yeah distribute the money more evenly yeah. feed the people there there should be more distribution of, of money like the insane wealth uh gaps that we have are are inexcusable like it, it shouldn't be like that like that none of that makes sense but mm -hmm. i don't know i i think we're like on the precipice of a very interesting time um, because we might be able to actually see like, you know, capitalism fucking finally eat itself and mm -hmm. it's really going to suck for a minute. Um, but maybe something cool will like come out the, the back end of it. Mm -hmm. um, I feel yeah. like as millennials, we're just getting like the shit end of the stick. 
<laughs> for like yeah. a very long time now. But yeah, I'm hoping it's better for like the next generations and I hope people care about climate change and like, I hope so too. Care about people. <laughs> yeah. We need more caring. Yeah. Like that's, that's a big thing that's lacking right now. I think like, mm-hmm. You know, it should be cool to like care about other people for you to like, you know, people to say, I love you more to, to each other. Mm-hmm. Cause like, that's another thing that like <clears throat> nudity shouldn't be sexual and like, you know, loving someone shouldn't have to be like relegated to when you're only in like a relationship or family or things like that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you should be able to like freely love whoever you want and care about them and have that be okay and not weird. And, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. Just less judgment and persecution would would probably yeah. go a long way. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, for sure. Then just like, everybody just needs to like keep their comments to themselves too. Like, <laughs> you can have all your shitty ass thoughts you want, but like, doesn't need to come out of your mouth. So you just. <laughs> I, I'm laughing really hard at that. Have you ever watched The Room with Tommy Wiseau? No. Okay. It's if you ever get a chance, go see it. It's terrible. Um, Mm -hmm. but so terrible, it's kind of almost good, but there's like a comment where like one guy makes a, a, he, he like yells at someone that has an opinion and he's like, take your stupid comments and shove them in your pocket. Honestly though, like sometimes I just want to be like, you didn't need to say that out loud. Like, yeah. Inside voice motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Like keep it in there. Like you want to journal it fine, but like, I don't need to hear it. No. <laughs> like, I don't care. I don't care about your shitty opinions. Exactly. You know, keep your shitty opinions to yourself and then the world would be a better place, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, I agree. If free therapy, that would also be good. Oh yeah. Everybody else needs therapy. Let's like just- mandatory therapy. So it should be like, everyone should have mandatory therapy and then mandatory vasectomies until you proven sure. that you're like financially capable and somewhat responsible yeah. and then you can get like it reversed. Um, yeah. I think that would be great. So free education, yeah. uh, free therapy, vasectomies for all. <laughs> yeah. And your therapist should have to sign off when you like start a relationship to be like, this person has done their work. Cause like, I don't need to unpack anybody else's bullshit right now either. That's so unfair. And like, that's a thing that a lot of, of dudes do. And like, you know, I was guilty of it when I was younger. It was just like, you know, we all carry this trauma with us. And there's that like sort of expectation and thought that like, you know, it's, it's women's problem to like help men be whole or whatever. And it's like, no, Chad, that's your fucking problem. Like, but even both ways, like, it's just, I think again, you like you hold this trauma and you don't realize that it like, changes the way you think or like changes the way you do things or like makes you create like toxic relationships. It's like some people don't even realize that's what they're doing. And it's like, yeah, because you didn't go to therapy. (laughs) You didn't like figure your shit out. So now you're like fucking dumping your crap on some innocent person that like has no idea what's going on. So yeah. Like a fucking dog that's not potty trained that like shits on your fucking bedspread every time it comes over to your house. Yeah. Yeah. Go to therapy. Like yeah. everybody needs therapy. Let's just, <laughs> but yeah, free therapy would be beneficial. Like, I don't know why therapy is not free. I don't know why mental health, health care is not free. Like it's just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me either. <laughs> the world, just a mess. The world is a mess and it, it's kind of mm-hmm. gone mad, but in the same sense, like there's still, there's still a lot of beauty out there and there's still good people uh-huh. and I get, it's really easy to get like sucked into the negativity about a lot of stuff. But, um, I mean, even though the planet is like legitimately burning itself to the ground and, um, uh-huh. <laughs> its ability to sustain our life is dwindling. Um, uh-huh. there's still some cool shit to be seen. And like, I mean, I hope that we can go down cameras blazing and uh, people making art, playing music, things like that. Like the uh, musicians on the Titanic. Like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When the world just explodes, hopefully we're having a great time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
I mean, when we do find out when the world should end, there should just be like a massive orgy where everyone's just the same and just. <laughs> yeah, no, no, like one percent, like everybody just gets it. But exactly. Yeah, I think it's like just you always got to just surround yourself with the right people, too. I think that like people yes. have learned that a lot over COVID as well as you don't need toxic friends and you don't need toxic family members and, yeah. you know. Choose your, choose your company wisely and your life will be a lot better. Exactly. Like it's the, the people that you choose to surround yourself with do make a huge difference. And, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, like you always have a choice of like who you want to offer your time to, who you want to engage with. And, and I think like that's one thing that so many people don't factor in is how precious our time is. Mm -hmm. Like, the most valuable thing um, isn't like, you know, how much money you have in your account or how many things you have or like whatever. It's like the time that you have. And we don't even know how much of that we each have. Like, you know, mm -hmm. we all have this like piggy bank of time inside of our bodies that we don't know what the balance is. So it's just like, you know, why, why waste that on, on mm -hmm. people or things that don't make you happy? Like that's, mm -hmm. As I've gotten older, that's one thing I've become like fiercely defensive of is my time and where I choose to spend it. Mm -hmm. Learning to say no is like a big thing, like saying no to things that you don't want to do. Like if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Like don't feel obligated and you don't owe anybody any explanation. Like absolutely. You don't need to like, I'm pretty introverted. Like I, I do like to go out. I love to see my friends, but like I have a, like a social clock <laughs> and then when that's done I'm like I've Irish goodbye and I'm out and I'm gone and I just like my friends are very understanding of my life disappearing but it's like if I don't want to do something and I don't want to go somewhere like I'm very honest like I'm sorry that's not my thing and like why don't we go get a patio drink next week and it's like making those kind of compromises and yeah but it's like just say no don't don't do shit you don't want to do. Exactly. It's okay to say no. And people just need to accept that. Like, don't try mm -hmm. and bully or guilt or like whatever. Like, yeah. you know, respect each other a lot more. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's, that's what we need to do. Just yeah. say no. <laughs> <laughs> just say no. Bye. Exactly. <laughs> just say no to people just. using up your time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah shitty people say no but drugs are okay yeah say yes to drugs for yes, sure absolutely say yes to drugs <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, at least once like try them <laughs> like give it give it a shot at least like, yeah i mean i think we've proven that the war on drugs is bullshit and yeah. you know in some cases i've met people that drugs make them better people Mm -hmm. like, I've I met agree. them on drugs and I've met them not on drugs. And I would much rather prefer some people to be spending on time drugs. with them on <laughs> drugs. And yeah. that especially includes prescription drugs. Like, you yeah. know, if you've been given a prescription for something, there's probably a decent reason for it. And, you know, take your meds. Yeah. And, and don't uh, be embarrassed about it. Like, who cares? No. We're all fucked up. <laughs> like, you yeah. went to therapy. You got the drugs. You're winning. Exactly. <laughs> take the drugs. Do the therapy. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm on the therapeutic drugs. I'm not ashamed about that. Um, I have been in the past because it feels like yeah. weakness, but like whatever. Mm -hmm. I have messed up brain chemistry, and in a different time, I'd probably be institutionalized. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're at least living in a time where your family doesn't like lock you in the attic. And yeah, like I'm still okay. I'm a tiny bit terrified about someone calling a wellness check on me because I'm pretty sure that would be like a death sentence. But, um, you know, other than that, YOLO. Yeah. YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, live in, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. yeah exactly. I think that like there needs to be less also stigma about mental health. Like we're all fucked up. Like we're human yeah. beings. We're like skin suits full of weird shit, <laughs> like trying to not die. Like it's, yeah, Not exactly. Easy out there. We're we're like rotting bags of meat with a little bit of electricity <laughs> shooting through yeah. it that makes these things yeah. move around and it's like, yeah. you know. Riding a fucking rock through space. Like let's just take the drugs, 
yeah. live the life like I mean you don't you. you don't have to go like full Hunter S. Thompson, but like, you know Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but if you want to, <laughs> do you. Yeah, exactly. Like if do that's you. do you. Like do whatever makes you happy. That's the moral of the story is Exactly. Do more of what makes you happy. Exactly. I yeah. think that's a good message to, to end on there. It's like, yeah, <laughs> do more that makes you happy and just like be loving and respectful and uh, shoot film. Yeah. Tell more people to fuck off. Also, that sucks. Yes. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> be nice, but be mean to shitty people. <laughs> be, be a baddie if you have to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Stick up for yourself. Get it. Like, Definitely say I love you to more people, but like to people mm-hmm. that like infringe on your space and don't respect you, don't be worried to say fuck, go fuck yourself. Like, yeah. I mean, uh, it's kind of a dicey thing sometimes too because some <laughs> some people might get a little unhinged. But like, you know, be firm. Yeah. If you feel then safe you send to them do to so. therapy. Like, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Recommend a therapist. Yeah, like Bye. it's. <laughs> Send them to therapy, kick them in the balls. I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, Recommend a great therapist. They'll be fine. You know, send them like a hugogram or something. <laughs> Cause like maybe you don't want to hug them, but they really need a hug to like calm the fuck down. So yeah. You know. People need more hugs. I think out there too. Yeah, absolutely. Hugs are fucking important. So yeah. Be respectful. Tell people you love them. Hug people if you want to. Tell people fuck off. Just, <laughs> just do you. Just Get do it. you. Absolutely. I appreciate you hanging out with me. It's been a lot of fun. We definitely went on a lot of different places, which I, I enjoy that when that happens because it, it's nice to sort of like get out of the regular norm of like, tell me more about this camera or film stock and things like that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's nice to get to know people more. So I appreciate mm-hmm. that. Well, thanks for having me. It was fun I was a little like nervous because again I'm super introverted and I was like I'm gonna be weird and I was definitely weird but it's just part of my persona so it's fine well I mean I'll be completely honest with you I'm also a fucking weirdo and I appreciate talking with other weirdos because I think like weirdos are the best and make the most interesting people um normal people actually kind of terrify me a lot because um I'm like why aren't you weird like, yeah, yeah. Where are your quirks? Exactly. Like, it's like, why? Why aren't you're not fucked up? And it's just like, yeah. you didn't need therapy. What? <laughs> well, I mean, most of them probably do need therapy. Like, you know, let's be honest. Um, they're just better at pretending than we are, I guess. <laughs> That's true. I can't pretend. Just no. full weird all the time. I tried to pretend for a really long time, and um, yeah, it kind of drove me even more crazy. But uh, yeah, there's no fun in that. No fun in not being yourself. Not at all. Um, <laughs> so thank you for sharing your weird with us. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, if you ever make your way out to Vancouver, let me know. I'd love to show you around to some like great food places and snack places. And uh, if I end up heading to Toronto, I'll definitely let you know. Sounds good. It was great chatting with you. Thank you. Um, next week, I'm going to have uh, Min Woo Lee on from the Lower Mainland here in Vancouver. Uh, That should be pretty exciting. And uh, thank you again for hanging out with me. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Bye. Bye.